uh, setting high expectations uh, for the boys they are developing into men. Uh, this, these high expectations uh, that are expected from young boys who are in these programs. What, what do you all say about that? Because uh, from what I was reading, some of these programs have them to where they even have to turn their grades in to, to the mentors, and then the mentors then you know help them and find out what's going on, become advocates for the young men when they uh, have issues with uh, law, with the law, and so um, the options are great. They're, they're, they're quite capable. I mean, um, for them to survive, those who go into the microclimate, for them to survive and negotiate and, and do as well as they do, and it tells me that they're very capable. And so it's a matter of giving them some constructive uh, training and, and some more constructive environments. And that begins, that, that has to begin very early to teach them how powerful they are, how great they are, and so they can believe in themselves. So that, so, so that self awareness and self acceptance is a developmental process. And that's why the, the passages are so important. So as they as they understand, they are educated, and so they get to a point where where they are become adults. They're also mature. And mature. Nothing is more sad than somebody in front of mom's way still behaving like a child. And even starting with the men of color, who wouldn't that be awesome? Because you had everybody there, judges, lawyers. If they would take on one boy, mm -hmm. that young man wants to be. Uh, Attorney, you an attorney. If, if those hundred, and this is something Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mr. Miller talked about, would say, I'm going to adopt, literally. I'm going to, I mean, you know, I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, yeah. spiritually, when I say that, this young man, because he wants to be me. Mm -hmm. And the goal is never to be me. That's what I love about saying Kofi. Right. Saying Kofi means you go to the past and move forward. Right. The goal is to make you better than me. Yeah. You know, I had a joke, and I won't put his name out here, one of my spiritual sons, right? And I was telling him the day I went and checked him out. He said, I'm getting you. I said, you got a long way to go. You have to be better than me, right? You owe this community. The more you know, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more you owe. You, we owe the ancestors. Right. We owe this community. We owe Martin. We owe Mel. It's never about us. And that's the biggest key to ministry. Ministry with mentoring means that you're not bigger than ministry. You're not bigger than me. It can never be about you. Yeah. And we, we were saying today that you got ministry and ministry. We want ministry in life, right, where we minister, not about the man. Oh, look, look, all right, no, we don't need that. Because if that's the case, look at the, I mean, look at the jam we in right now. So obviously, that form of mentoring did not work. Mm -hmm. right. one on one. <laughs> One on one, and it's a lifetime commitment. It's a lifetime yeah. commitment. It's no Saturday. You know, it's a lifetime commitment. You pour your life into these organizations. Yeah. And so, so that whatever they're going through, they can come to you and share and know that you got their back. Yes. Uh, that's what young people, uh, that's what they embrace. Mm -hmm. okay. Who got my back? Mm -hmm. you know, who's with me? Right. Who's for me? Because they don't have that. And, it, and it's very important that they have that kind of commitment because they've been let down so much already. Some of them have been abandoned by their natural parents. Some of them have been abandoned by the schools, just let them down. We're talking about expectations. We got teachers who don't expect our kids to perform. They don't even have an expectation for them. You know? I mean, I, as, as a college student, I had a white teacher to tell me uh, that my seat was about my level of comfort. That, that's, that's about as good as I can get. And have no embarrassment about saying that. You know, it's about expectations. Right. And so we have to make sure that we nurture our kids in a safe, loving environment where their, their uh, psychic is no longer damaged. It's already being damaged by the media, right. by the, the things that they're the negative stuff in the, in the community. And so we need to bring them into a secure place and venture them one-on-one -on -one so that they all have a good understanding that they're made in the image of God and they are truly something. <laughs> we go, oh, go, go, go. And, and to we'll be able to, to deal with yeah. psychic violence, uh -huh. your hair is okay. 
You know, right. I'm into the natural, right? Yeah. That's one thing we do the culture fair. We got an amazing thing coming. I'm into really the natural. Your hair is okay. Your eyes okay. Your lip, your nose, your mind. You are okay. Right. We've got to start telling you are okay. You are you. And L. Cool J used to say the home around girl or home back girl, whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, when, when I was on a panel with him years ago, he broke that down. And that simply meant that person who just felt good about who they are, yeah. regardless of what neighborhood that you live in. And we gotta get to that point where we're dealing with psychic vitamins that you feel okay every morning you wake up. Mm. I just feel okay, I feel great. Right, right. Yeah, because okay, okay people don't hurt other people. Mm. Right, right, right. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Uh, we, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I don't even know how much time we have left on, on the film, but what we wanna do as we wrap this up, is we just want to go, and if you could tell us uh, some uh, more about your book, um, and then we do have some over there on the table, and then, if Brother Marlin, if you could tell us more about what programs uh, you have coming up, and we'll start with you. Okay, thank you, Brother Marlin. This book is really, um, it, it started out as my uh, thesis from my doctor at the uh, Ashland Theological Seminary, and one of my students, uh, and she ate with the uh, doctor, and she says, what are you doing with this? I says, nothing. She says, well, this should be in churches. I said, tell me more about it. She says, we need to have this out. So I said, okay, if you'll edit it, I'll, I'll publish it. And so we published it uh, last year in April. And I have used it in Michigan, throughout Michigan, uh, in churches, training men who are in church how to mentor other men, and then for those men, then mentor boys. Mm -hmm. the, that, and that came out of my desire as a young man coming up in America in a racist society, knowing that I needed somebody to mentor me. And along the way, I had mentors in my family, mentors in the community. You know, I didn't come up just by myself. I had somebody looking out for me, watching me. My first cousin was like <laughs> a giant, so nobody in the community would mess with me. So I had somebody that had my back. And so I knew that if I could write a book where uh, it could be pointed out that somebody needs to have somebody else mentor them, and not just anybody, but someone of integrity, someone that's spiritual, because that's the thing that's going to last, and that's the thing that's going to get people through storms and problems. And so it's my hope that this book can be used. In fact, I sent a copy to the president of the States, okay. thinking yeah. that he would share with somebody else because he talked about the advantages yeah. of mentoring. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've also tried to get it into uh, the hands of those who are working with uh, being incarcerated. So that once they get out, they'll, they'll have some idea because this is this is uh, instructional. It tells them the steps to go through and it tells them the step that's required for them to become a mentor. So before you can get to become a mentor, you got to work on yourself. you got to do some self work. And then you you are required to share that with somebody else. That's the basis of it. So this book is available at Borders, uh, online, Amazon, uh, or you can call me. I got my cards here if anybody sends us. And, and since the people are listening, can you just go ahead and give your uh, number out and if you want to give your email out there? Okay, the church where I serve is Transformers Ministries is at 4641 Hoover Avenue. That's the skating rink. That's our most important. My number that you can reach me is 937-361-6201. And you can go on the website and find my ministry at transformingministries.org. And that's where you can see the uh, work that we are doing. We, we focus on children of incarcerated parents and we work with Angel Tree. Before that, we have a relationship with United, Unified Solution where we would uh, get children and find mentors for them and uh, do what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this. My personal training at Mentoring came from uh, Wilson Good, uh, Amachi out of Philadelphia. Legend. The legend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Well, mine just, just, just been doing a lot of stuff. There's some things that I'm really excited about is definitely looking for mentors slash woman tours to go into these schools. I've made a commitment to not just Dayton Public, but Dayton schools. I also work with Shaman was working fair mind to bring positive men to those schools. But then also I'm the supervisor for the street advocacy of Mega Community Development Corporate. I'm looking for street mentors. These are guys who have transformed their lives 
They can be X, it don't matter. We all X something. Right. So I'm looking for the X fight. These street mentors, we're going to the streets. We're going to go to the, we, we've been going to the clubs. We're going back to the clubs like we used to do. Right. We first started BBI. I'm taking street mentors, guys who can identify with the streets. One of the things we've learned, that the streets won't die for us, so we're not willing to die for the streets. Mm -hmm. Another thing we learned, you're never too young to die. So we're going to take these street mentors, men and women. You mentioned Sylvia Mosley. My number one streets, oh, yeah. good job. Uh, my brother Greer, we're going back to the street. Another one is that, uh, like the Christian rites of passage, I, I love my church, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm keeping it real, make it right here, keep it real, make it holy. Uh, we do every every third Sunday, what we're doing with, at Omega, we're doing rites of passage. If you got a kid from seven to 12 years old, they can come to the church. I got 15 men on board starting next week, it's gonna start coming. And then I got our church with some, some valiant, powerful brothers. And that's what we want to do. Uh, this model, this Christian Rice and Passes model, uh, I'm, call me, get information free. <laughs> I can train you free. Train me free. I've been certified this since 1998. And one of the things I'm happy is the most with myself in this city, Dayton, Ohio, youth ministries, I've done 22 youth ministries pro bono. I went in from Omega when you were doing youth explosion. Hey, what, what you mean? You can pick my mind. I work with some of the most stalwart people across the country that I come in for free. So if you're a Christian, I mean, hey, there's an opportunity there. You can come to Omega, learn, take it to your church. See, we ain't tripping on that. I mean, we shouldn't trip yeah, on that. You know. And that's what's keeping us back. Yeah. You know, and I and you know, I being a brother in the nation of Islam, I definitely want I definitely recognize number one that the nation of Islam we can't do it all. We need our we need to lock arms with our Christian brothers and sisters, then lock arms with our nationalist brothers and sisters. I mean, because in truth, the common denominator are our young children and their future. Yes. And for us to be arguing about this and that foolish things mm -hmm. while our children are laying in the street dying. dying. And we're arguing mm -hmm. over foolish mm -hmm. things that can't unite the great and a better future. Mm -hmm. What kind of God mm -hmm. that? What kind of God mm -hmm. looks at that and says, okay, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. and, and be careful when we say black lives matter. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, let, let's be careful. What does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Black lives matter does not just mean the police, that relationship with the police, police brutality. That's right. Black lives matter, the last 10 years, we killed 65,000. Yeah, yeah. We killed 6,500. Yeah. The Klan, in over its 50 years, only killed 4,400. Yeah. So y'all hollering at Black Lives Matter. It needs to matter for our young boys. Exactly. Okay, bro, yeah. put the gun down. Yeah. Put the gun down. Books up, guns down. Okay, put the, where are you at? Right. So you, it's easy to get up there, like I was sharing with my oldest spiritual son, my, he's my oldest son. I told my, I can't out to be young for the last two years. Okay, what's the plan? Mm -hmm. We know our pain, Yeah. right? We know our pain. Right. With pain comes the plan in order to get power. Right. So I'm telling them, okay, that's good. Y'all, y'all think we're doing the diet, I totally support. Yeah. But what's our plan? The plan has to be we've got to go back into community, locking arms with our brothers. See, they, they, I'm a part of that brothers keeper thing, not at a day, not a Cleveland initiative. I'm one of the guys. I we go past brothers keeper, bro. Let uh, me keep real to make it right here. See, brothers keeper can't kill that. So we understand the whole philosophy behind Brothers Keeper. Our new thing is I'm my brother's brother. We miss it, don't miss it, right? I'm my brother's brother, I'm not going with my brother. I'm not gonna kill my brother. I'm not gonna lie on my brother. I'm not gonna cheat, I'm my brother's brother. We gotta get to that point. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. So, so we gotta live by the go move and common sense. So I like to challenge those, when you black lives matter, I mean, black lives live, black lives are, okay, what, 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 okay, okay, we see, we know the problem now. Are you gonna be a part of the problem or the solution? Black lives matter. I need to see you in these schools. I need to see you on these streets. I need, I need to see you quit mistreating these sisters, right? I said, I need to see that part. Yeah. Then it really matters. Give sure, out your sure, sure. contact information. Well, you call me my cell phone. I get 50 calls every day. Uh, 937. 475-2707. And you can go to the website. Website is www.marlinshopperford or you can catch me on Facebook. Is that dot com? Or dot com. com. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, excellent. And uh, let's give these brothers a round of applause. And then... <laughs>
Wait, 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 let me say a little bit about Knowledge for Life. Uh, Knowledge for Life, we're a nonprofit 501c3 uh, organization. Uh, as you can see, some of the young people who are on the cameras, what we're doing is we have a youth program called the Youth Expo Show. And we are looking to, uh, we're, we're getting young people into the program. And what we want to do is we want to teach them basically some video, uh, video production skills and some light journalism. We're working with the Association of Black Journalists and uh, some of the other organizations uh, to help train them so that they can eventually graduate and begin to produce a youth program that they will have my brother, my brothers on uh, and do help uh, Jeff Mims and bring some of those black professionals and let them interview them on how they got to be to where they were or where they are. And so um, over at the table, we have some uh, DVDs. Uh, but we, if you don't want to buy a DVD, we have a little green bucket over there. And you can put in, donate anything that you're able to donate uh, to, to the program. Um, and you can reach us at Know for Life. You can go on the web at knowforlife.org. That's knowforlife.org. And you can read more about the uh, program and also donate online. Um, and with that, we want to, um, I want to just go ahead and read just a little bit here, and we'll go ahead and close out with this. And basically, this is, um, I won't read all of this. Uh, I know we're getting late, but I, I'll read just a little bit of it. This is the uh, pledge from the Million Man March. <laughs> uh, and, and many of us were always there, and if, and if you, and if any uh, black man was there, you know that that was an experience because we have to realize that we were just coming out of a phase where more black men were killed in one year than in five years in Vietnam. More black men were dying in one year than those that were killed in five years in Vietnam. And they were putting out movies called New Jack City, mm -hmm. Boys in the Hood, mm -hmm. and Menace to Society. Mm -hmm. And they were framing us in a way that they were going to bring in tanks. And just mow us down because you remember, and if you all think that that's fun, that that's not true, remember the mayor of Philadelphia, the sister, she brought in the National Guard at one point. Mm -hmm. Brought the National Guard in because of the violence, and uh, so, um, and you can go online and read more of this pledge, but I'll read just a little bit of it. It says, "I pledge that from this day forward, I will strive to love my brother mm -hmm. as I love myself." Mm -hmm. Really, we can stop right there. That would end the lot. It says, I, because that's the golden rule. You want for your brother what you want for yourself. I, from this day forward, will strive to improve myself spiritually, morally, mentally, socially, politically, economically, for the benefit of myself, my family, and my people. I.